when I show you guys this suit, uh, versions of this suit which have been uh, published across a 60-year comic book history, across newspaper strips and uh, cartoons and live-action movies, you would know that this is Spider-Man, right? You know that this is not just Spider-Man maybe, right? This is, this is not Miles Morales Spider-Man. This is not Ben Reilly Spider-Man. This is Peter Parker Spider-Man. But if I asked you to describe one of the outfits that Peter Parker wears, would you be able to do it? Let's try again. Um, if I asked you to describe an outfit that was worn by Storm of the X-Men, you might come up with uh, two or three, right? You might be a real comics fan, and you might remember the time in the 80s that Paul Martin Smith dressed her up to look like Mr. T with, like, the mohawk. But do you remember any of her outfits that she wore outside of her superhero costume? Because they're all kind of fabulous, right? Like, Storm was actually designed to be an iteration of supermodel Grace Jones. My point is that the thing that allows us to relate to superheroes is their humanity, not their powers. And that's probably because not all of us have jobs where um, we might have to worry about being killed all the time, right? But there is something that we can relate to in terms of having to balance our workplace drama and our life outside of work or our relationship drama. Those are the human qualities that allow us to relate to superheroes. But doesn't it seem strange if the thing that allows us to relate to superheroes is the thing that we have in common, and yet we kind of always tune out the places in which we're all dressed the same? Isn't it likely that, at least subconsciously, um, these common appearances are helping us to create an additional point of identification between the audience and the character? As a fashion historian, I think that these clothes are a wealth of untapped information because... We say so much about our identities through the ways that we get dressed, whether we realize it or not. I could probably tell you something about your spending habits based on the clothes that you're wearing, or your values, or your tastes. And just the same, every garment that is depicted on a superhero is an opportunity to understand more about a character. It's the chance to depict introspective change or agency within the narrative, but it's also the chance to understand more about the comics creators or the artists or the costume designers who created the outfit or the societal and larger cultural systems at play that help them to direct these choices. So the superhero genre is this ideal site to discuss the importance of dress and fashion because the superhero costume is such an intrinsic part of being a superhero. There's this really unique moment of like becoming, right? Where the thing that makes a superhero a superhero is that moment where they get to get dressed up in that special outfit that no one else has. So superheroes are rather defined by this duality, right? They have those alter egos, they have their secret identities, and they're very purposefully depicted in these two different kinds of dress to visually differentiate their two lives. But by putting all of our analysis on the superhero costume and then ignoring all of their other clothes, it's a bit like saying the only thing that matters about your mailman is that he works for the post office, and that's clearly ridiculous, right? It's this binary that's interesting to me. It's the costume versus fashion part. Because within fashion studies, costume and fashion are almost opposite terminology. When I say that I study superhero fashion and then people ask me about the superhero costume, it's actually a little bit confusing, so I want to actually take the time to break down those two concepts and why they're different. So in what other instances do we actually use the word costume? We're definitely using it during Halloween, but we're also sometimes using it within the context of traditional or ethnic dress. Costumes are the sort of thing that we dress up in, um, but we don't wear them every day, right? There's something that's part of our identity, but they're not our entire identity. And we, when we wear a costume, it is representational of something that is larger than ourselves. And we want to connect with and be recognizable as something. So as a time period, as a character, as a culture. And in order to be recognizable and representational, uh, the imagery and that garment have to be sort of relatively static and symbolic over time. Fashion, on the other hand, is one of the most ephemeral things that there is. The fashion industry actually releases new collections every season and relies entirely on the marketing of saying like, oh, this version is aesthetically superior to last year's because in fact, all of fashion is just changing for aesthetics and style rather than any sort of purpose or function. So the word fashion, though, can also mean like popularity or it can mean trend. It can mean similarity in aesthetics. So when we look back on fashion and the short-lived nature of trends, it's precisely that repetition that then becomes representational. 
it becomes representational of a time period, and then it allows us to create costumes out of decades. And then that gets kind of confusing, right? Because we really only have two words to describe fashion and costume the way that we get dressed. Especially because sometimes a superhero does get a new costume, and it usually does change for aesthetics rather than like just a tech upgrade, and it usually is solely for the purpose of selling a new comic book. So then wouldn't that be how we would usually describe fashion? But their clothes don't necessarily look in fashion as compared to what's in fashion in the fashion industry, right? But they might look similar to all of the other new superhero costumes that are coming out at the time. So then that might give us the idea of there being two separate fashion timelines, one that's like fashion fashion and one that's like superhero fashion. But then what about all the heroes that are like Jessica Jones and John Constantine and Ghost Rider? And they're, they're purposely not wearing archetypal cape and tights outfits. Like they've picked out trench coats and leather jackets and tank tops and things that you can buy at the mall. Or what about the heroes that are wearing like particularly super on trend styles or those that are dressed in subcultural styles like Punk Mohawk Storm? Um, if they are wearing those same articles of clothing repeatedly, they're then becoming recognizable and representational, which is, again, like a costume. So we can see this repetitious symbolic wearing of the same garments as similar to a uniform. But then uniforms can also be costumes because otherwise we wouldn't have strippers just as like sexy firemen, right? Um, and subculture can adopt streetwear clothing as a type of costume, and rock stars can adopt things that they saw on the runway as a type of performance costume that they're only ever wearing on stage and then the couture industry can make runway clothes and red carpet outfits that are only ever worn in those places, and that's also kind of costumey. The point is that I don't actually blame anyone for conflating the two ideas of fashion and costume, because the truth is that we've decided to describe these two words as a binary when they more accurately exist on a spectrum. The vocabulary to describe those nuances on that spectrum literally just don't even exist yet. So I've chosen superhero comics as the battleground for this discussion precisely because of its emphasis on the costume and its nature as a visual medium. So why is it that we could look at two archetypal superhero costumes and we could call one of them a costume and one of them fashion, and it's not necessarily just the one that's made up of clothes that you could go shopping for? What does it say about our values as consumers to consider something to be fashion? The inspiration for art is always coming from somewhere. So the concept of popular culture means that an image or an idea has been disseminated across media and mediums in order to be recognized by the masses. So understanding the perceptions of fashion from outside of the fashion industry can help us study the phenomenology of how something becomes visibly recognized, becomes popular, or becomes part of culture. And then if we can understand how fans fashion then transitions to costume, we can create new words and definitions surrounding dress so that we could stop conflating all of those meanings and all be speaking the same language. And considering the universal act of getting dressed is this like incredible tool for articulating your identity and your place within society that seems pretty useful to everyone, right? The next time that you pick up a comic or watch a superhero program, which is probably pretty likely when you consider that all the box office records have been done by superhero movies recently, I would challenge you to spend some time looking beyond the costume. Not just the big character arcs where they might choose to change style because something happened introspectively. I want you to pay attention to all of the times that the X-Men and the Avengers are laying around their mansion, just like in t-shirts, or they are going shopping at Bloomingdale's because it happens all the time, literally all the time. And they don't need to wear either a superhero or a civilian disguise in any of those domestic spaces, right? Everyone knows who they are but they more often than not are actually depicted wearing civilian clothing. And they could have just as easily been drawn in a superhero costume in those moments. It might have actually arguably been easier to draw them in the superhero costume that everyone's always used to seeing them in. But instead, someone made a creative choice, right? Someone made a choice on the creative team, and I want you to see that choice. I want you to notice that garment. I want you to realize that you could choose to explore maybe the way that that character would be dressed according to trends, or Maybe where you might have seen something similar, like did a celebrity wear something kind of like that recently, or a social movement, or what kind of fabric does it look like, or does it look expensive? It's just, see how many connections to the real world you could actually make. Because to me, this is really an opportunity to understand culture, and this is really to understand a moment in time. Noticing all of this interconnectedness 
has the opportunity to make us all more conscious consumers of our media or more conscious producers of media. Studying how habits are formed can help us shape a better future. And I would argue that there's nothing more powerful than that. Thank you, everybody.